Welcome to PTG TV. Of course, I am Antonio Hicks. Now I'm always talking about AI and robotics with all these new human or robots being deployed in tons of manufacturing plants across the states and AI being incorporated into organizations, each of which is sparking huge layoffs. The one thing that's always intrigued me is once all the jobs that can be automated or have robots put in the workers place, what is to happen to those workers? So thinking about that, I wanted to put together a list of jobs that are safe from AI and or robots right now, right now, just right now. These, these jobs require some training, like going back to school, but you know, that's the nature of things. Now, unless you have some, you know, some transferable skills, which we'll touch on that later on with this. So I'm always talking about it on my show, but I never give any real solutions and I'm trying to be a solutions based thing person right of this year like when i'm giving like examples of when it comes to policy or politics like what are some alternatives or examples of things that we can do as individuals when it comes to affecting changes in our community and the same thing with technology because i've been working i mean y'all know me i've been working in technology for over 20 years i mean you can see the you know the grades and stuff so i always talk about it but i never give answers or solutions like i just said so i want to going forward do just that so if i make a video on issues i want to give another follow-up video to talk about solutions to the problems at hand and when it comes to careers i'm definitely passionate about this because i myself too am included in this i think a lot of us a lot of us are because like i said i do work in technology so i do want to offer like five careers right now like top five and i'm gonna touch on some more later on in this but the top five right now and now all these are the first five are not all it stuff I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you it's not all it stuff so don't always think i'm just gonna just highlight on you know technology things because not everybody wants to get into technology so right now these are top five careers right now that's so that that's somewhat not affected by ai or robotics right now so while AI is certain automating task in some fields, there are many opportunities that are also emerging thanks to its advancement. So it has helped us out a lot. And I just want to highlight that too, because I don't want everybody to think that AI is, is all bad because it can help you out with your business and it can help you out as an assistant. I mean, I, I use it all the time and I can't wait for, you know, it to be really deployed in everybody's household. And I, I want to highlight that again, too, before I get on the actual, the top five careers, because you can't use it for advice. You can use it for, I mean, it's no different than Googling. It's no, you can use it to help, like I said, with growing your business. You can use it towards helping to file your taxes. You can use it for like automations within your home. So it has its perks, but I mean, at the end of the day too, when it have its perks, it's taking the job away from somebody else and somebody's losing a job. So here are the top five. Here are the, the top five right now. And again, I'm gonna to touch on some more, but you are the top five. Home care aid. So as the population ages, the demand for home care aids is projected to grow significantly. So I mean, we all gotta get older. So this role requires compassion. You gotta have some form of compassion, strong interpersonal skills, and the ability to provide basic care and assistance to elderly or disabled individuals. So now you, with that, you got to have some kind of on the job training and certification programs that are available that you can get. You're making it more accessible to those without a degree. So if you don't have a degree, you can still get like a go to a trade school and you can actually learn that. But I say that now knowing too that in the back, knowing too, because I followed stuff. This new company called Eve is deploying out their version of the humanoid robots. The robots stand about six two, and it's going to be used to help out with cooking and cleaning and even protecting your house. And that's already ready to go right now. I mean, you can use it for manufacturing stuff, but they're really selling it as almost like your assistant at home. So that that is common. But I mean, as it stands right now, I don't think that's gonna be fully deployed within like, until like the next three or four years. Because a lot of people, when you're talking about healthcare workers, a lot of people have issues with some of the nurses and stuff. I mean, I had an issue with the nurse that was taking care of my grandmother before she passed away because she really wasn't doing her job. So I can, I honestly can see robots being put into that as long as they have some form of compassion with AI and stuff, they can really, they can learn their patients. And I'm, I know, I know I'm sounding like, okay, I'm all for AI. I mean, robots coming in there, but I'm just saying, you know, if you don't want the human effect, you can have a robot effect. Cause I want, I want to be taken care of, but I don't want to be in a nurse at home. So if that means I got to get a robot put in my house, I want a robot. I, I mean, I'm saying to get a robot anyway, but that's the first one. 
Number two, cybersecurity analysts. So while AI, it can assist with detecting threats, human analysts are still crucial for interpreting data, understanding complex attacks, and implementing security measures. Now with this, you, you still need strong analytical skills, you need attention for detail, and you've got to have be passionate about technology, which is the key, key ingredient in the success in that field, which is why I, I, well, I kind of work in it to a degree. That's what my education, my degree and stuff in. So you can get various forms of certification and go to boot camps. If you don't want to go and get an actual four year degree, I took the path of getting the four year degrees. I don't have any. I should get a certification. I don't have any certifications. I mean, and I, my whole attitude is why I haven't gotten a certification yet is I've been doing it for 20 years. And I'm like, man, how much more money I got to spend towards like educating myself when I can learn some of this stuff for free at home or doing like some online classes for that don't cost as much as going to get another certification but because i mean you still have certification you can get from like comp has a security plus you got your cisco you got your uh, cissp which is one of the top top uh cert security certifications that you can get and then i mean it's, it's a whole bunch more that you can get on top of going to like the boot camp so that's cyber security is a good field to work into is you're going to always need it i mean a lot of people which is crazy a lot of people jobs companies cut that out early on until they start getting hacked and they want to hire you know us back into it but anyway on to number three. Number three, wind termite technician. So with the growth of uh, us talking about clean energy, renewable energy creates, you know, this exciting opportunity in wind farm maintenance. So these the technicians, they install, they uh, inspect and repair wind turbines requiring, you got to have some strong uh, mechanical aptitude, problem solving skills, and an ability to work in, in heights. Now, as long as you're not scared of heights, you can do this job. This job pays exception in the world, but I think it's because of, you know, the environments and stuff that you're put in. Now, you can go get some vocational training programs for this or go to a school with vocational programs. Or you can do an apprenticeship, which I, we have a lot of schools here. In, I mean, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. And one of the ones I know, like one of my best friends, she's the president of college, um, Atlanta Technical College. They have programs. I don't know about for wind turbines, but they do have. It's a it's a technical school. So they do have apprenticeships and things of the nature there. And they pay, they pay pretty well. Like these top three jobs I just named, they pay pretty well. I think a home care aid, I think at the most they might get paid is like 70-something thousand. But I mean, cybersecurity analysts, that's well in the six figures. Wind turbine technicians, that's in the six figures. To my understanding, it's in the six figures. Uh, next one, HVAC technicians. Number four, HVAC technicians. So as the focus on energy efficiency uh, increases, you still need skilled HVAC te technicians to come out and handle maintenance on this. So they're, they're in demand. So they install, they maintain, and they repair heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. So you still need some, you got to have some technical skills for this. You got to have attention to detail and you got to have, you know, customer service abilities. You got to be able to talk to people when you go into their houses, into their properties and business and stuff. Now you still got trade schools for this and you can still do an apprenticeship program. This is a little, like I said, part of Atlanta Technical College. They do have that there. I actually interviewed somebody on the show. Matter of fact, I've interviewed somebody on the show for their podcast, Atlanta Technical College podcast, and they go through what you would need to be an HVAC technician. So go over to Atlanta Technical College and check out the episode on HVAC. So it is it is out there. And it's a high in demand job. It's not that's not going anywhere until they get robots. They can really get out and maneuver around places, get in crawl spaces and do and that's it's gonna be a long time before that happens. Number five. So we had number five, a licensed practical nurse, so LPN. LPNs provide basic nursing care under the supervision of a registered nurse. They take vital signs, administer medications, assist with hygiene, and monitor patients' well-being. Now, this this career path it requires you got to have a high school diploma. A lot of got to have a high school diploma or a GED or equivalent and completion of an accredited LPN program. But you don't have to have like all that training, to my understanding as a registered nurse so these are the top five careers that you can get into that's not going anywhere anytime soon as of yet cyber security analysts it could and like that's my one of the things that I, you know i kind of work in to a degree uh those that's the ones that's out of all these four or these five that'll be the one to get cut down first and you still got your general general trade skills that aren't going anywhere like you got your plumbers your electricians your carpenters construction managers welders and fabricators so all those trade skill jobs they're not going nowhere no time soon and it's all manual labor stuff so if you like working with your hands you don't want to get in nothing technical 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 like working in like it feel like i work into you still got your, your general trade skill jobs and they i mean they pay well you can start your own business doing it and they pay exceptionally well now 
the jobs like technology. So we're gonna get on technology. I'm a technical person. I'm gonna talk about the technology stuff, you know. Those are the top five, along with like I said, your trade skills coming out. But technical stuff that's not going nowhere, no time soon. That pays exceptionally well. They pay exceptionally well. And they say they're in demand. Now nah, I call cap on this, but they say they're really in demand. They're having a hard time filling all these jobs. Unless they're just picking certain people to work work in these roles. Or, you know, the recruiters have been too strict. But anyway, these are top six, top six technical jobs that you can get. A robotics engineer. Number one, robotics engineer. This designing, building, and maintaining complex robots requires a blend of creative and problem solving, mechanical ex expertise, and problem solving skills. So you gotta be able to handle all of those things. So robots, they often operate in dynamic environments and require human skills, like adaptability and troubleshooting for real intervention, real-time intervention. So I like Boston Dynamic Robots, which I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen doing backward flips and stuff like that. It robotics engineers take robotics engineers to work into those fields developers. I mean, you they need coders to be in there, you know, coding what those things the robots can do. Number two, cybersecurity specialists. So we just talked about it early on uh, analyst. So with cybersecurity, you know, it's always evolving. So you got to have worry about your threat landscape. And it's always an in demand for, you know, human ingenuity and creating critical thinking skills to stop hackers. Now, hackers it's the wild west out there. Hackers going to be hackers. And you can shoot one down, but you're going to always have one that's going to learn from what the other hacker did and don't make the mistake and come at you again. But you got to have uh, be able to analyze stuff, vulnerabilities across network platforms. You got to devise security protocols and then be able to respond to uh, breaching necessities. Like when things start to happen, be able to interpret and understand what's happening and then how to mitigate and stop the attacks from taking place. So really got to really just be able to think outside the box. Number three. User experience designers, so UX designers. We, we this we need this like right now. Like small businesses need this, major corporations need this. It requires you, you know, you got to be a very creative person. I thought about doing this, but I when it comes to designing and stuff like that, I'm I'm just not good at that field. But this is one that you can take right now. So you got to be intuitive. You got to understand user friendly interfaces, which requires empathy, understanding of human psychology, and and. and I'm sorry, got to get my words together. And an iterative approach to design. So AI, it can assist with data analysis and testing, but the core creative spark and ability to read human behavior likely remains is irreplaceable. So you need those skills to be able to create that user experience. AI ethics and governance specialist, number four. So as AI applications become more ubiquitous, ethical considerations and responsible development will be you know, paramount in keeping them under some form of control. I'm sure once it becomes self aware, they're going to be like, I can control myself. But, you know, if we made it, I, you know, we still want to have some governance over it. So this role requires a broad understanding of AI technology coupled with ethical and legal expertise to ensure responsible implementation and mitigate potential harm. So you want to make sure what you're trying to do now, on, you know, Capitol Hill, trying to make sure that AI is not trying to plan and become the Terminator and be like Skynet and start wiping out the human race. Uh, number five, biomedical engineers. So developing life-saving medical devices and prosthetics demand a strong grasp of biology, uh, engineering principles, and material science. So this field is, is heavily involves customization and adaptation to individual needs, making a prime candidate for human expertise alongside evolving AI tools. So you can use that in conjunction with AI to help towards making prosthetics and things of that nature, which I'm, I really wish we could focus on it. We can get, well, anyway, I'm not going to make this off political. I'm not going to get into political stuff, but that's a good skill to get into. We need that right now. When it comes to like amputees, people with disabilities, so and people with birth defects. I mean, a lot of this stuff, biomedical engineering is like a phenomenal next stage. It's like I've been playing cyberpunk, and that's you know, that's that's what happened in cyberpunk. The bioengineers, they like be changing up people's bodies, so that's going to always be an in demand job that a robot I don't think will be able to place re replace by itself. And then, number six, a data center technician. The tried and true data center technician. And I'm going to speak to this firsthand because I work in a data center. If it's requiring a computer hardware expert who helps in installing and maintaining data service and network equipment. They often have, we often have like extensive knowledge. You got to have an extensive knowledge of data center infrastructure and the ability to troubleshoot technical problems that may come up from hardware installations and or 
you know, uh, fiber cables or copper cables going into and out of the servers into other routers and the equipment in there. So I'm a lab, I'm a lab engineer. Uh, the robots are not coming in to data centers anytime soon. Like they, they, they're, they're just not, I mean, some of the other stuff that I do, it can be automated from the testing and stuff that I do because all software based, those things can be automated. But when it comes to actually physically being in that data, data center to rack and stack those servers, routers, switches and everything else, it's going to be a long time before we see a robot get in there with precision to be able to install that stuff up, install like the, uh, the, the ports and stuff and swap out cards on the servers and stuff. It's going to be a long time for that to happen. So these are the top five jobs that aren't going anywhere. We talked about trade skills, trade skills too, that aren't going anywhere anytime soon. All these jobs pay exceptionally well. And then we got into the top six, like it stuff that I know without a shadow of a doubt, AI is not replacing and robots aren't coming in. So I hope this helped you all out. You know, look at something, you know, try to get some training on it. Pick up and take an apprenticeship program. Join some of the communities out there that actually work in it. So they do have a ton of like meetups. They have like people have Discord servers and Slack servers that actually work in a lot of these fields. They won't mind helping. I mean, as long as you show the initiative that you want to actually learn, this is technical stuff. Learn this stuff. People don't mind helping you out. And some of the training you can get, it can be done for free. I don't care. Like, I just did one with one of the people I work with here at uh, Kit Labs. They just did one for um, for blockchain and, like, Web3 stuff when it comes to looking at security and then looking at vulnerabilities in certain parts of uh, code. So, and they did it all for free. And, I mean, certain people got, some people that actually attended the class got, uh, they got jobs from it. So, yeah, again, thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all that are going through this transitioning process I mean, because I'm still I'm looking for work again, too. I mean, I'm not laid off, but, you know, I'm always looking for, you know, something uh, that you find something. You find something that you let you like doing that you care about, because I want people, I want you all to work in fields. that's going to make you happy when you especially now to this whole return back in the office thing that at least when you're going in, if you got drive in, that is something that you like actually doing and you're learning something from and they can take care of you, take care of your families and help grow you, you know, in the future. So thank you all for tuning in again. Y'all be safe out there. PGDTV Matrix out.